Fresh comments from global central bankers pour more cold water on the overly stretched red cut expectations as this morning's unexpected rebound in British inflation brings forward the idea that the UK may not be an isolated case. So sovereign yields rebound this morning. The US dollar extends gains. The euro slips into the bearish consolidation zone against the US dollar as sterling rebounds from below 1.26 level against the US dollar in response to a well, stronger than expected inflation report. So welcome. This is Swiss Coast Daily Market Talk. So yesterday was just another day where another policymaker pushed back on the exaggerated interest rate cut expectations that went well ahead of themselves, remember, since the end of last year, with the sight of the Fed's latest dot plot that actually suggested that there could be some 75 base point cut from the Fed this year. And yes, investors went to pricing up to 150 base point cuts this year from the Fed. So that's twice what the latest dot plot from the Fed suggested. And so it is not really surprising that the US policymakers and other policymakers come up one after the other to say, hey guys, just calm down. Expectation of five to six rate cuts this year from the Fed is overdone. So yesterday, it was the Fed's Christopher Waller's turn to insist that the Fed should go methodically and carefully to hit the 2% inflation target, which, according to him, is within striking distance. But with economic activity and labor markets in good shape, he sees no reason to move as quickly or cut as rapidly as in the past and as is suggested by the market pricing. So that was it really. Another enlightening moment yesterday went down the market's throat in the form of, well, a sell-off in both equities and bond markets. The US two-year yield, which actually captures the interest rate cut expectations or interest rate expectations from the Fed, rebounded to 12 basis points. The US 10-year yield jumped past the 4% level, the US dollar index recovered to a month high and is now testing the 200-day moving average resistance to the upside this morning, while the S&P 500 retreated 0.37% at yesterday's trading session. Now, the Fed's Waller spoke from the US yesterday, but a lot of his counterparts and colleagues are whining and dining and speaking in the World Economic Forum in Davos in Switzerland this week, which doesn't only offer snowy and beautiful scenery this January to everyone, but it also serves as a platform to many global policymakers to bring the market back to reason. So, just expect some more comments of this hawkish kind during this week from Davos because it turns out that one of the most popular topics of this WEF is rising inflationary risks due to the heating tensions in the Red Sea region, which disrupt the global trade rows and explode the shipping costs, which may be inflationary. Now, note that. The European Central Bankers were actually the first ones to push back on the interest rate cut expectations since last year. They were the first ones to attract investors' attention to the looming inflation risks and to the idea that the ECB doesn't really consider cutting its interest rates despite, despite the slowing economic activity in the euro area and the looming recession worries that would in theory, justify well, rate cuts in the euro area way more than rate cuts that we might see in the United States, where growth and jobs numbers remain surprisingly and non-alarmingly resilient, mind you. So many, many ask why on earth the euro dollar doesn't benefit from that hawkishness from the ECB. Well, it did to some extent. It did, because the pair actually advanced past the 110 psychological level at the end of last year. Yet, the reality is that even though the ECB starts cutting its interest rates after the Fed, 
that's what is expected to happen, and costs less than the Fed, the deterioration in the Eurozone's economic fundamentals had already started counterweighting the hawkish ECB views since the start of this year. And now that the Federal Reserve members have started giving out a more hawkish voice to actually balance out these overly uh, stretched Fed cut expectations for this year, the so downside correction in the euro dollar is all but surp rising. And note that from a technical perspective, there is now an important development that we see in the euro dollar chart because the pair slipped below the 108.75 level, which is the major 38.2% Fibonacci retracement on the October to now rebound and is now into the medium term bearish consolidation zone. Hence, there is potential for a deeper fall in the euro dollar. The next natural targets for the euro bears are the 200 day moving average near the 108.45 level and the 50% retracement level that stands near the 107.93 mark. Elsewhere, while the US dollar's uh, strength pushed the dollar yen past its 100 day moving average this morning, with dollar yen bulls targeting the 148 level for the very first time in almost a month and a half. Now, the 148 150 region certainly shelters decent offers from the yen bulls that will keep the idea of a Bank of Japan normalization alive. Cable, on the other hand, which was trading a touch below the 126 level this morning, on on expectation that inflation in the UK would further fall and boost the dovish Bank of England expectations, well, rebounded following an unexpected rebound in the British inflation numbers released this morning. Headline inflation in Britain unexpectedly rebounded to 4%, while core inflation in Britain remains steady at the 5.1% level versus the expectation of a decline below that 5% psychological mark. So, this morning's inflation disappointment in the UK has least sterling bears to trim their bets below the 126 mark at the moment I'm talking here and keep the pair afloat above the 50 day moving average, which stands just a touch above the 126 mark. We see a certain softening in the dovish Bank of England expectations after the inflation data and a rising skepticism about the scenario that investors refuse to price in these days, which is a potential pickup in inflation numbers in the next few months due to geopolitical tensions and the rising transport costs, which will, by the way, not only concern the United Kingdom, but the rest of Europe and eventually the US as well. So inflation risks remain tilted to the upside globally. Now back to the UK to give Rishi Sunak his due. Inflation in Britain more than halved last year and is expected to return to the Bank of England's 2% inflation target by spring this year. But a U-turn in the inflation trend due to the geopolitical developments in the Red Sea region is increasingly likely and calls for a balanced approach from the Bank of England. Now, a hawkish shift in the Bank of England expectations should throw a floor under a sell-off in sterling and keep cable while holding on to its strength above the 125 psychological level. Yet, the UK's anemic growth should also limit any positive move that we might see in sterling against the US dollar into the 1.28 mark, even more so as the inflation expectations in the US could also rise. In the energy markets, crude oil remains offered despite Red Sea tensions. I fell on one interesting graph on Bloomberg that actually tries to explain what has been driving these oil prices lower since last year. And this graph clearly shows that the ample global supply and that despite OPEC's output restrictions actually explained the downside pressure that we saw in oil prices last year. The demand size contribution to the oil prices has been weaker according to this graph. Now, they also bring up this graph to say that supply disruptions due to the Red Sea tensions could actually curb supply globally and push these oil prices higher if the global supply narrative remains the major driver of oil prices this year. But in all honesty, 
with this deteriorating global economic outlook, we will likely see a weakening demand also offset a part of the supply disruptions due to the Red Sea region. So that's also well negative for oil prices. So the outlook remains kind of bearish. So this is all for today. I'm Ipe Göz Kardeşke and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful and supportive comments. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments, your reactions and your questions below as usual. And follow us on Instagram, on X and on LinkedIn for regular market updates. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily market comments. And don't forget to hit the like button to let us know that you enjoy these videos. So I will meet you again tomorrow and until then, good day trading.